What's up, Bolt fans? Haley Elwood here, and if you're feeling like you're not quite ready for Chargers game day, well, buckle up, because you came to the right place. Over the next 30 minutes, we're bringing you exclusive interviews, analysis, player features, and access you can't get anywhere else. How you do it matters. Well, we've arrived, so let's get you caught up. This is Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. Week 12 is here, and for the Los Angeles Chargers, they'll head to Denver for an AFC West battle against the Broncos. But heading into this week, the Chargers are 6-4, and four, and most recently are coming off a win over the Pittsburgh Steelers. For a young team with a new coaching staff, finding their identity has been a focal point of the Chargers this offseason, so let's go behind the scenes to see how they've done that in the first installment of this week's All In, powered by Bud Light. All right, so through the first eight weeks of the season, what have you learned about the Chargers? So they started off really hot. Ball is on the ground. Charger ball. I've learned that the quarterback is as good as we all thought he was last year. Herbert to throw. And now middle of the end zone caught. Touchdown, Chargers. I've learned that the coach is really smart. Herbert throwing. And that is caught. Chargers win. You know, they start off 4-1, and one, and you start looking at the schedule, and I'm talking to reporters and people who follow the Chargers, and like... The Chargers look sensational. Rans Daly has been the most pleasant surprise of this NFL season. Then all of a sudden, the brakes kind of hit. <laughs> the New England game, I felt like we competed really hard in the game. I mean, it's a tight game in the fourth quarter. He drills it. 27. 24 the final. I think after the game, our players really um, poured into each other. Okay, here's what we've seen. We said we got a good enough team to go to where we need to go. We've got to do a much better job of focusing on the things that we're not doing as well. Alright? Because those corrections are ultimately going to take us where we're capable of going. To take care of that little bit, you have to become more connected. You gotta do a little bit extra. We've played in a lot of different types of games. What we've been able to do is really find out who our team is because of these tight games. And we've been able to grow as a team a lot more rapidly because we have an accurate measuring stick of where we're at. After practice in the Philly week, our guys just, we stayed a little bit more. After practice, we got with our coaches. All right, welcome to Monday, guys. Listen, uh, <clears throat> Obviously, we're all disappointed in how we played yesterday, right? I mean, obviously, there were good things, but, um, you know, a lot of things that we could have done totally in our control that could have changed the complexion of that game completely, all right? And we'll take a look at some of those, all right? But it was said, Brandon said it, you know, we're four and three. I think the best team in the AFC right now has got two losses, right? So we are in the still in the mix of this thing, all right? Well, Chris Harris put it really well when he was like, you know, the real football starts in November because there is a feeling out process over the first two months where teams are trying to figure out themselves and then they're also trying to figure out what opposing teams are. And that doesn't really become clear until November rolls around for both yourself and your opposition. You gotta figure out what is your stuff. What's the stuff we can rely on week in and week out that's going to be our DNA, our identity. How important is it to understand your team team to understand who they are as you get this critical. It's really critical. I think it's critical for a couple reasons because you, you start to deal with some attrition injury-wise, like the, just the NFL season starts to express itself like, okay, you're starting to manage, okay, a couple guys are out. Like against Philadelphia, our top two corners are out. All right, how are you going to play? Coming up, we go inside the Bolts' win over the Philadelphia Eagles, and later, we see how the team is preparing for the back end of the 2021 season. Right? I'm asking why it took so long. Hey, losing a losing hair by the day because of you guys. It isn't because of my kids. It's because of you guys. Unbelievable. Hey, great job. That's the way it should sound. 
This segment of Chargers HQ was powered by Toyota. Welcome back to Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. In week nine, the Los Angeles Chargers went into Philadelphia to take on the Eagles and came out victorious. The offense got in a rhythm that day. So let's hear why that was the case from those who were part of the game and those who covered it in this next installment of All In, powered by Bud Light. Chargers heading uh, east to take on the Eagles in Philly. What intrigues you, D'Angelo, on this one? I mean, I think it's gonna be how Justin Herbert responds. They're coming off two losses. People are questioning how good the Chargers really are. Does Justin Herbert have what it takes? Have teams figured him out? For you to come together as a team and have confidence that you're going to win the game, even when a couple guys are down, is really, really important. And I think it shows that you're defining that you have a team. Let's go! The only way we're going to do this is together! Yes. The only way we're going to do this is together! Yes. Yes. It might not matter much, you know, when it comes to like tiebreakers and stuff like that, but to get an extra victory in a really tight division, AFC West, it, it means a lot. DJ, the AFC West is crazy. The Raiders <laughs> just lost at the Giants 23 to 16. The Broncos are on their way to a victory at Dallas. So the Chargers can either end the day tied for first place in the AFC West or conceivably, depending on what the Chiefs do against the Packers, they could end the day in last place in the AFC West. Yeah, it is wide open. It is wild. And you've got to find a way if you're the Chargers to get back in the win column. Because now, look, the division is there for you. And it has to start here today we're in it we've given ourselves a chance to play in november december with a lot at stake out of the pocket herbert sets home run ball mike williams a big play downfield my god oh, my god Shotgunning with Gainwell to his right. Read option hand up. Gainwell in for the touchdown. Chargers down by one. 302 on the clock. Herbert back out there. Is Justin Herbert the quarterback that he showed he was in those first five games? Or has he been figured out? And in my opinion, it has the makings of a game, a get-right game for Justin Herbert and for the offense. Herbert. Trying to run, he will, Herbert, touchdown! Chargers go in front, and it's Justin Herbert doing it himself. It's Dan! It's Dan! It's Dan! Now we hunt. Come on, man! So Philadelphia will have a first down and 10 at the Chargers' 28-yard line, attacking the end zone to our right with 642 and counting for the fourth. Scott in the backfield, Hurts. Hooks a pass. Got his man, Devontae Smith. He's got the angle. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Well, it was, it was time to win the game. And I, uh, that's, that's when games are won. Back when the, the glory days of the Lakers, Magic used to call it, Magic Johnson called it winning time. That was winning time. I'm reminded of the Chargers' last drive at Washington, and that would hit the spot to make this the Chargers' last possession. Yeah, be Houdini, make that clock disappear. I felt like we played against Philadelphia how we practiced, and we really poured into that week. And I think when, as a coach, you're talking about response, that's the response that you're looking for, is not what happened at the game, but what happened before the game. And I think what happened during the game is our guys were getting that confidence, understanding, hey, all this stuff that we've worked on is coming to light. Second out and seven charges at their 28. Herbert shotgunning, Herbert looking right. He's got Eckler, right side of the 33. Great inside move for the first down. Spin around and pass the 40. Eckler to the 35. Puts his head down, bashes into the land of the Eagles. It's a first down for the Chargers. They convert on fourth down. 
And let's watch how Los Angeles wants to manipulate the clock a little bit as well. They can't get too cute because the bottom line is they have to get points out of this drive. You know, in their perfect world, control the ball, control the clock. And when you're in a tight game like Philly, you're able to create that trust that we're going to get it done because we've worked together throughout the week. It's fourth down and less than a yard. That's where we're trying to get comfortable is in that fourth quarter, in these tight games, in the got to have it moments. And now they take the timeout, and it's still not a field goal attempt. Looks like it's still the offense out there. Wow. When you look across to the other sideline, they're hoping that you kick the field goal. They're hoping that you kick it. And when you know that that's the case, that gives you all the wind that you need, all the confidence that you need to go. If they make it, then they control clock the rest of the way. Because you know that's not what they want. 145 left in the fourth quarter, all tied at 24, and the link is rocking. And understanding that we aren't going to play safely. We're going to play competitively. We're going to be aggressive. That's how we want to play it. And I know that if we get that first down, that the game is in our hands. Herbert under center. Eckler is the tailback. Quarterback sneak by Herbert. He surges. He struggles. It'll depend on the spot. It's a first down for the Chargers. Their ball with 131 and counting. Eagles out of timeouts. Yes, sir! Yes, sir! That's the type of statement you want to make to your team, to our players, is we want the game in our hands. Allen in motion, second down and 11. Eckler drives through. Eckler puts Los Angeles in proper position. Look at the vision. He sees the cut because he gets in behind those linemen. Who doesn't want to have that in, in your coach? Who doesn't want to have that sense? It's the, it's the little kid who, has the, who takes his ball and goes home. It's like I'm taking control of this, and we're gonna we're gonna dictate how this game ends. It's not gonna be you guys. It's gonna be us. With five seconds left, come on, come on for the lead. Snap back, ball down, right-footed kick, clears the line. It is good. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! They started with that long drive was the opening argument. This was the closing argument, and this time they punctuated it. That's as impressive a drive as a team can have in the NFL. The Chargers have come into Philadelphia and knocked off the Eagles, 27 to 24. When we return on Chargers HQ, we go inside the meeting rooms and onto the field as the Bolts prep for the Week 11 game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I'm over there, and, and we got a little fierce during individual. Yeah, we got a little fierce. We got a little fierce. Dream, I like bro. friction. Welcome back to Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. Chargers head coach Brandon Staley has said his goal is to have his team playing their best football towards the end of the season. Now that we're past the halfway mark of 2021, let's check out the emphasis the Bolts have put on practice and staying tight in hopes of finishing the season strong in this week's final installment of All In, powered by Bud Light. Chargers fall to five and four. Oh, they lose to the Vikings 27-20 on the LA Chargers football network. I'm really proud of the way we played in the run game yesterday. D-line, we're coming off the rock. I think we found our sweet spot. I think we found our sweet spot, how we need to play together, okay? There's a couple things that they can even help us even more. But I think we found a sweet spot that I'm, I'm excited about. All right, but I'm proud of you guys. Let's make sure, right, that we get into the details of this tape and then, hey, we wipe this one clean and we get on to Pittsburgh. Here we go, guys. I think we're improving, you know, and I think as a coach, you know what you see on a daily basis and you know the way it should look like. But when you when you take on that blocker, your vision's gotta be on the ball. Yeah. You know, and then you'll know what angle you need to take. Yes, sir. Good finish, Sant. Good Josh. Finish. Good Josh. I want to see our team treat this week like it has a life of its own. Good job, guys. On the move now. Come on, on the move. I want our team to be thinking microscope, okay? And I think the telescopic part of the season is for other people. 
The microscopic part of the season is for us, the competitors. So I'm over there, so I'm over there, and, and we got a little fierce during individual. Yeah. We got a little fierce. We got a little fierce. In my dream, I like bro. friction. So here's what we got to do. Here's what we got to do. When we get fierce, then what, what's got to happen? We got to we gotta join back up. And we got to lock in. We got to lock in. Yeah. See, you just know I'm on fire now. So my pops, my, my pops, so my mother, she's in heaven right now looking at us. She'd be going head on with it now. Don't be, don't be like, she, so fire is good. It is not bad. Fire is good. It's how things get solved, okay? It's how solve, you put, it's how you solve. Hey, time out. Hey, time out. Time out. Hey, what took so long? What took so long? Because that's the way it should sound. I know, that's, I'm just saying that's what it should sound like. Why did it take so long today? Now I can, hey. Right? I'm asking why it took so long. Hey, losing, hey, losing hair by the day because of you guys. It isn't because of my kids. It's because of you guys. Unbelievable. Hey, great job. That's the way it should sound. That's the way it should sound. As coaches, you're planning for a long season. You're preparing to build something that is going to be its best at the end. Like that's our vision and that's our process. That's the kind of that I'm talking about in terms of how we're going to go from five and four to ten and four. Five and four to ten and four is just understanding how important your job is. But for our players, I think what we're finding out is where is that sweet spot in our season? Where is that sweet spot in terms of the roles, the responsibilities? Um, how do we bring these game plans to life? That trust in one another to bring a game plan to life? Chris. Hey, hold on, go again, go again. Okay, good, 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 good. And I think that that's really where the magic is, um, is in bringing a week to life. And I think that our players are really kind of understanding me and understanding our, our staff and then, you know, that relationship of how, how we do that together. All right, let's go, bring it in, y'all. And I think that that's where I'm at in terms of this next stretch is how close can we become so that we can truly say that we're playing our best towards the end of the season. Coming up, we find out the story behind this week's hometown hero. So her, her window was slightly cracked. So we started to pry on the window outward and that's how the window was able to shatter. Welcome back to Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. Here at the Chargers, we'd like to take a moment to recognize an individual making an impact in his community. This is the story of a deputy sheriff who rescued a woman from a car accident moments before it burst into flames in this week's Hometown Hero, presented by Grant Thornton. Uh, my name is Justin Reed, deputy sheriff with uh, Assembly and County Sheriff's Department. Uh, I'm currently stationed at the Tuna Hills Police Department. Living up to his oath as an officer, even off duty, a San Bernardino County deputy pulled a woman out of the wreckage of a mangled car just moments before it burst into flames. So on that day, I was assigned to work and uh, on my way, I noticed that traffic started to pile up a little bit. So um, as I continued to drive down the freeway, I seen a white car that was looked like some small flames. And then I started seeing people start to surround the car so her, her window was slightly cracked. So we started to pry on the window outward and that's how the window was able to shatter. Um, the three of us had pulled her out. Around the same time, the fire department was also arriving on the scene. So she was able to get immediate help. It was just my instant reaction. We are trained to react quick, to provide help, get people to safety. And that's just what I did. I'm just, I'm just happy I was able to help her. Thank you to the Los Angeles Chargers and Grant Thornton for this award. That'll do it for this week's Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. We'll be back next week with more Chargers content ahead of the Week 13 game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Haley Elwood. Good night.